Welcome to a discussion on globalization and the changing dynamics of social movements. Both as a student and common person, we do understand that we live in an era of globalization since late 1980s. This era is widely facilitated by phenomenal expansion of information and communication technologies and the emergence of information society, which is also termed as knowledge society. This emergence has widely affected the way we think, the way we do the activities, organizing our social activities, forming of our solidarities across the space. This alteration has widely affected the social movement culture, the way social movement are organized, manifested and interlinked all over the globe. As against this backdrop, we'll be having a discussion on globalization and the changing dynamics of social movement. In doing so, what we'll be doing, first we'll be contextualizing social movement within the whole dynamics of society. Then we'll be conceptualizing social movement. We'll be delineating the vital elements of social movement. Then we'll go further, talk about the origins, perspectives of social movement. Then we'll talk about the intersectionality between globalization and social movement and transformation on social movement, both in the globalized world and in the pre-globalized world. We also will be talking about the varieties of manifestation of social movement and social anti-movement within this globalized world. Then we will be concluding with the formulation of a social movement society. Let us begin with how do we contextualize social movement. When you contextualize social movement, usually it is thought of social movements are the exceptional episodes, exceptional phenomena in the society. But as a student, we will have to accept that social movements are not exceptional phenomena, they are part of the society, part of the social progression, part of social development. But these are different from the regular process of social progression and social development. How is these are different as Alain Torain talked about, these are different in that way that it talks about the varieties of anomalies that exist in the societies. Somebody, some force, some solidarity, some group should come forward to delineate, talk about the social anomalies, to talk about the social injustice. That's why what Alain talk, Torain talks about, social movement are the burning fires in the society. It talks about the social anomalies, social injustice, and simultaneously depicts and suggests the ways and means for rectifying those social anomalies. What Melusi widely talks about that they're the prophet of the present. They live in the present society. They also forecast that what kind of society, an ideal society can be built up. So in that way, both as a burning fire and as a social uh, prophet, social movement talks about formation of an ideal society. It talks, social movement not only talks about the formation of ideal society, it also creates a democratic space, space giving everybody a sense of equality, fraternity and justice. And through that, people can create a space for their existence within the democratic arrangement of the society. By doing so, social movement creates a kind of a new pace within the social order. That new space is full of new ideas, full of new journey, a process of rejuvenation in the society. So when you are talking about these are the, these are the location of social movement within, within the social uh, society, let us talk a little bit about what do we understand by social movement. Social movement, though they live in the society, they are a social phenomenon, but they are different from the rest of the other social phenomenon. Because there is a tendency to talk about any kind of collective mobilization, any kind of collective episodes to be social movement. No, there is certain, certain kind of phenomenon to be accepted, to recognize some kind of episodes to be social movement. What are those? Social movement are the first organized and collective efforts. These are organized and collective, that's why they are not like a, a, a sporadic, a kind of a spontaneous uh, reflection of a one-time phenomenon. This is a collective, well thought about, organized effort first, 
to bring about change in the social thought, beliefs, values, attitude, relationship, and the major institution of the society. Or they may be organized and collective efforts to resist those changes, a change in those what so we talked about in the thoughts, beliefs, values, attitude, relationship and major institution in the society. So it's having two components. On the one hand, social movement can rejuvenate the change, facilitate the change or social movement may also be organized to resist those changes. So we are having a way to look into in you know, what way those collective organizations, those collective organized activities are taking place or, or has taken place in the society. At this stage, let us talk about the, some of the key elements, some crucial or the vital elements of social movement. As I told, the social movement ought to be organized activities. First, we have to recognize that, that there should be an organization. Until unless there is an organization, social movement can't be sustaining. So it is through the organization, through the organization, the social movement come together. Because it is the, through the organization that produces an, another kind of element, what we call a leadership. A leadership is important until unless there is leadership, there will be no people to, to mobilize the people, to uh, articulate the interest and to convey the message of that organization. So there is a, there is a difference between the masses and the messengers. So, so the leader, leadership are the messengers, they, they give the message of the organization. Organization is an abstraction, but the reality, leaderships are the realities, those who are visible. Third important component is that ideology. It is the ideology that gives legitimacy of any collective action, legitimacy of organizing, legitimacy of asking for change or legitimacy for resisting the change. The third important component is an ideology. Ideology is, an, is, is a worldview, is a worldview, a collective way to look into the world, it's a kind of perception. The fourth important component of the interest articulation. Interest, there may be several people having varieties of other interests, but those interested are to be threaded together, are to be put together in an organized way. So what do you call about, in every, every movement there is a demand, there is a chatter of demand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so these are the demands, so these are the change they want, these are the new thing the social movement look for, what are those new things, what are those changes, what are the change in those institutions. So this specific interest articulation of the people are, uh, are another important component uh, of social movement. So these are usually done by the leadership in negotiation with the people. When people come to a social movement, they become part of collective mobilization. Until unless there is collective mobilization, that is the life force of a social movement. A social movement can't be a social movement. So life force of the social movement is always a collective movement. The visibility of the movement. Leaderships are there. Leaders are there in one place. But the leadership will not be able to get mass of a meaning until unless there is collective mobilization. Okay. So in this collective, through this collective mobilization, it comes to the sixth point that is developing linkages. Social movement develop linkages with varieties of the other uh, movement, varieties of the people because several people will be, ha be having several kind of interests, several kind of grouping. Social movement, they develop the linkages and alliances with varieties of the social groups and varieties of the other formation in the society. By doing so, it develops a kind of a community of followers and participants and sy sympathizers. So social movement will have a concrete followers they are the concrete followers, they will be having concrete participants, they will participate in the movement. Then also social movement will have a kind of sympathizers. Uh, sympathizers, they may or may not participate, but they may be the sympathizers of, of social movement. By doing so, social movement also create another com community, community of the opponents. So social movement is as much the followers, as much the participant, as much the uh, sympathizers and the adherent. Simultaneously, they also create a community of the opponents against which the social movement is directed. That may be the state that may be the uh, employer, that may be the other forces. So, so a, a kind of a thing which we call the, a developing a community of followers and participants and sympathizers, similarly an identified category of the opponents of social movement. Then 
when these are already there, but social movement is also characterized by sustainability. A social movement should have the character of sustainability. It should not be only one point phenomenon. That may not be a movement. If it is only one point phenomenon, people are organized under the leadership of some people. So uh, that may evaporate the second day. It does not continue. It does not continue. It's not having that sustainability. It may not be a social movement. So what is important? Social movement should have an element of sustainability. Then the ninth phenomenon is that identity formation. Because by creating a community of followers, the participants, the adherents and sympathizers, they create an identity, a kind of a solidarity. That through that solidarity is movement is, is, is known. So that solidarity is, is the identity of a social movement. That identity is linked to the ideology, identity is linked to the leadership, linked to the organization, linked to the interest articulation, linked to collective mobilization. So what is important? Social movement also will create uh, identity. Last but not least, that every social movement should have a life history. Every, it's a social movement of the living thing. I mean, one social movement um, is, is continuing over a period of time. In the process of its continuity, it may reject many of the earlier element. It may also incorporate many of those elements. In the process of incorporation, it may have new organization because it, there may be certain uh, new leaderships are coming, a new leadership. It may have some ideological modif uh, modification. It may have new interest articulation. So what is happening in the process of progression of social movement, social movement acquires a life history. That life history denotes the whole trajectory of change of social movement. When we are talking about all those criteria of vital elements of social movement, we will have to recognize another fact that social movement is also having the specific origin. And also, it's, since it, it is having, um, it is evolving within the society, it is having certain origin. Origin means we are talking about the causes of manifestation of social movement. What are the reasons? What are the origin? How, how it has emerged? Why it emerged in the society? There are four or five mega uh, perspective widely talk about the social movement originates because of the following thing. One important um, dimension widely talked about the structural strain in the society. What are the structural strains? Those may be new cultural parameters or new technological innovation has taken place in the society. Those have put lot of strain on the society. That strain is looking for a new kind of a change. That is new kind of a change, societal arrangement to be brought in. So people feel like that is old kind of arrangement, the cultural arrangement and the technological arrangement. Those are, don't need some modification. So people may organize themselves uh, for a social movement. The second is that the status inconsistency. There may be status inconsistency in the society. Those inconsistency in the form of economic, cultural and political. That is, somebody may be economically well off, the upper class and the lower class, the cultural inconsistency. Somebody may be culturally belong to having lot of cultural assets, the education, attire, the language, different kind of access to the educational institution, cultural institution. So there may be other may be deprived of those cultural element, cultural capital, we call it. There may be similarly political powerless and political uh, powerful people. So we, we, there may be those kind of inconsistencies. So we find economic inconsistency, cultural inconsistency and the political inconsistency. Simultaneously there is another that is relative deprivation. That is it is not absolute, relative. Some are culturally more progressed or some advanced having more access over the cultural elements. Some are less. Similarly relative deprivation in the economic terms. Some are economically well up relatively, some are economically less well up. Similarly, politically, some may be politically more powerful, some may be politically powerless. Then also there is cultural revitalization. At one point of time, it become that is old culture gradually gets, you know, um, not rejected. People feel like there is old culture, though needs a kind of a revitalization, a kind of a renewal in itself. So people may come to organize this social movement. Now this fourth phenomenon, what is important is that one is the reality. There may be a reality structural strain. There may be reality of 
you know, uh, uh, status inconsistency. There may be realities of relative deprivation or there may be relative need of cultural revitalization. But the, what the social movement does, it creates a kind of subjective awareness about structural strength. It creates a subjective awareness for the status inconsistency, relative deprivation, and that motivates the people for a objective action. So social movement, because of it, that capacity of mobilization, it 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 take note of those objective situation and to out of this objective situation, it creates a subjective force to promote certain change and transformation of the society through collective mobilization, through leadership, ideology, and organization. Now, when you have talked all this about, let us talk about how social movements are also perceived by several school of thoughts um, across the globe. Social movement in the social science literature uh, is a very new penetration, even though it is uh, 100 years old. In the social science literature, uh, 100 years is quite a limited time. Uh, we have to accept that uh, though uh, um, uh, the age of civilization in, in, and the age of social science is quite new, but the social movement has existed um, in this uh, earth till the existence of humanity. Uh, but this has been conceptualized starting from uh, late 1920s differently by different scholars. Um, uh, those uh, the uh, one one group of scholars though they have not studied it but they have isolated it uh, social movement uh, from the academic discipline because of certain phenomenon they realize those can't be incorporated in the social science literature the collective behavior perspective they thought about social movement usually talk about non institutionalized collective action because all of a sudden people will come they will ask for certain institutional changes they will bring a kind of a break down either in the social organization or in the social control mechanism or uh, in, the, in the normative arrangement of the society. So the collective behavior uh, uh, group they thought of social movement um, are the non-institutionalized behavioral pattern. So they are kind of aberration in the society. Similarly, in the same way in the oh, widely came out the functionalist theorist. The functionalist theorist talks social movement that they are the potential agency of social disruption. What the functionalist talked about that there is a social cohesion, social integration through the part system and subsystems, parts and the total and the parts, the system and the subsystems. So through this cohesion and integration a system function. When there is a social movement, there is a disruption in the societal arrangement. So social movement does not have a legitimate um, uh, arena to exist within the social uh, science literature. But it was for the first time the symbolic interactionist that thought about the social movement talk about something new in the society. They talk about a change in the society. By bringing it, they show the sign of new life that may arrive. The art is a living being, society is a living being, so there is a new thought and action, there is a need of new societal framework, so social movement brings a new societal uh, framework. So they accept that social movement to be a living being, a creative being in the society, the Oath Academic Studies. The Marxist scholar, they consider social movement oath studying, but they are widely guided by economic determinism. They talked about all kind of social movement and the manifestation of class movement, the class of economic haves and have-nots, the owners and the non-owners, the employer and the employees. They try to see social movement in terms of dichotomies and binaries, binaries founded on economic determinism. So try to also in that way, they limited the whole space of social movement articulation and uh, social movement understanding in the society. Uh, we, we, uh, starting from late 1930s onward, the social movement became one of the vital area of social science engagement, both in America, North America, and also we find in the Western Europe. The North American perspective, they, they, they found that social movement um, having a legitimate space, it has emerged out of certain action and out of certain phenomenon that is created with the state intervention, with the uh, people's engagement and some inherent instinct of human being themselves. Uh, 
they talked about the social movement uh, social movements are usually guided by the persuasion of common interest by the people people usually look into their action in terms of certain rationality rationality of cost and benefit people participate the when people participate in the social movement for them because they calculate if they participate they will get certain benefit so cost and benefit calculation made the people at an active agent in the participation in the social movement but how the social movement culture created that all social movement emerged because it is the welfare state that provided the space for political participation of the people so by giving the political participation opportunities it created that space for people's participation so they also recognize it is the democratic culture of the welfare state that accommodated the collective initiative and collective mobilization so they find this a kind of a linear uh, kind of a relationship between popular protest people desire to participate in terms of acquiring certain common interest that opportunities they got within the political uh, formation of the welfare state and the democratic culture of the society by saying so they talked about the social movement take place because of mobilization of varieties of those resources those resources they talked about that uh, human resources the financial resources so political power is achieved by mobilizing certain resources and these are done when the rich people and uh, those the moneyed people the industrialists they pump certain money on the people on mobilization so that there is a political mobilization by the political entrepreneurs to achieve certain political goal through political means they, they looked into in terms of ends and means in terms of articulation of interest in the society when there is articulation of interest they want step further um, taro and other widely talked about the social movement are part of social framing and contentious politics what is that contentious politics they talked about a group of entrepreneurs they name a kind of a social problem simultaneously organize the people around that social problem and they construct a world here is an world a new imaginary world that is full of justice and that can be acquired through people's participation by doing it they construct a kind of social image and they make all the issues to be contentious issues this through this contentious issues construction and framing they frame a new kind of a world and this new kind of a world and imaginary world within which varieties of the people participate in the collective mobilization so what they talked about that is in the process of that collective mobilization so people construct a new world image so in the process of new construction social movements also contribute to the cognitive liberation what is the cognitive liberation that is a kind of new thought and action so in the in the process of bringing new thought of action it creates a new world so what we find that they widely talk about this is not american perspective of resource mobilization thought of social movement widely in terms of economic calculation cost and benefit pumping of money and also resource mobilization to gain certain political benefit but ultimately those construction of if a new world also contributes to the cognitive liberation thinking of a new world at this stage let us talk about how the cognitive liberation and the new world is widely thought about by the new social movement of the identity perspective while those kind of thoughts are going on in the north america similar way was it social movements were articulated um, in the western europe especially in the uk and in in france they talked about social movement like the labor movement um, that took place within the wide framework of emergence of the fabian socialism in europe then idea of fabian socialism uh, a socialism that is founded on democratic politics politics and also the welfare state in the uk and other countries and they pro, they gave wide space for people's participation um in the uh, making petition making la uh, protest and expressing and their feeling Uh, about nationalism to the state so those expression of those interest expression of those feeling widely contributed um, uh, to the articulation of 
new kind of issues they came. That issues came not only in terms of the labor movement, it also widely came in terms of the black movement, the gender equality movement, the human rights, the environmental movement, the gray rights movements. So new kind of articulation started coming in. So what they started doing it within the whole process of Fabian socialism and welfare state, people started re hyphen cognizing. It is not a cognition, it is recognition recognition of identity through the recognition of identity and self this try to create a new kind of a world environment in this new kind of world environment what they started talking about that is so white align torine when they talked about that is new social movement emerged to provide to get a potential it emerges as the potential bearer of a new social interest it is not the old social economic interest it is a new social interest that new social interest was widely guided by subjectivity idealism emotion uh, and emotion and those subjectivity idealism and emotion is not founded on materialism this is widely founded on a wider concern concern for the people people to empower themselves, empower themselves following a means of non-violence, following a kind of autonomy. That is that autonomy speaking in two spheres. One sphere of autonomy is that one people having the autonomy to be part of varieties of social movement in one point of time. They may be the, um, they have the autonomy to participate uh, in the labor movement, participate in the black civil rights movement, animal rights movement, gay rights movement. So they are having that autonomy. Simultaneously, that is the uh, you know, uh, personal autonomy. That is, they, they, they can, they can uh, uh, enjoy that personal autonomy from that public autonomy. So, so a kind of a liberation started coming in. Uh, that liberation was totally founded and till now totally founded the whole idea of global concern guided by subjectivity, idealism, emotion um, and a sense uh, to empower the people uh, guided on autonomy. Uh, what we find at this stage that is we, so far we have discussed that is um, the North American perspectives of resource mobilization. Um, the powerful perspective, similarly another powerful perspective of this um, new identity uh, perspective or a new social movement perspective. The, the new social movement perspective tried to see the world uh, not in terms of chronology, chronology of the old, chronology of the new, in terms of the new ideas as I told earlier. Now this arrival of these two kind of phenomenon, the existence of two kind of phenomenon, resource mobilization guided by interest and the uh, uh, a new identity perspective guided by um, the identity. So we find the two kind of perspective, interest and the identity, the subjectivity, idealism getting a more reflection. Now how these are located in the globalized world and how the globalized, globalized world uh, contributing to the manifestation of a new kind of social movement. Now when you talk about globalization, as I told in my first introductory part, globalization is having certain co-constituent. Co-constituent of this uh, new liberal economic globalization that we experienced from the late 1980s, it is guided by three important co-constituent. One is that enormous proliferation of information communication technologies that is computer, the laptop, mobile phone, or uh, several kind of apps, the uh, email, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, that, that exchanges varieties of information at a faster speed uh, and th that has produced a new kind of a social age, what you call the information age and uh, knowledge based society. That has, that has changed the human mind, yeah, human's creativity from land and industry to that of human mind. By doing it, it has widely facilitated a fast flow of several characters of societies, the first flow of human being from one part of the globe to another part, first flow of information uh, with the click of mouse or tips of finger from one part of the globe to another. Similarly, first flow of money, images, risk, practices and emotion across the globe. By doing it, we find that it has created new kind of a world which is identity is not guided based on a physical proximity, uh, rather at time it, it is a kind of a cyber proximity. So we kind of a fluid kind of identity, um, there is a fuzzy kind of identities in the society, it has emerged and within that 
a, a social movement is taking place across the space based on on the one hand a kind of a new emotion new kind of a social aspiration on the other hand fuzziness uh, of the identities now when you talk about this uh, world globalized world in terms of fuzziness of the identity fast flow of goods and services we find that what has happened a new forces across the globe it has decontextualized the world in the process of decontextualization it has brought in several contradiction uh, uh, in the in the relationship in the society what are those contradiction we find that um, in the process of decontextualization uh, a kind of contradiction between the interest and identities so it, it is not quite easy to look into whether some solidarities are formed for the sake of identities or for the sake of interest there is also interface and at kind of a complexity between these two can we compartmentalize the social grouping following in terms of economic interest or something guiding in the name of only identities let us give an example when you talk about the nationality identity it is above all identities people are guided by certain emotion and identities interest economic interest interest of the agricultural laborer interest of the workers interest of the farmers those are the economic interest so what we find what are the intersectionalities and contradiction between on the one hand identity those who are guided by an amount of subjective element and meaning on the one hand a realities of economic interest similarly it is guided a contradiction between the subjectivity and objectivity whether it is a subjective feeling that is guiding my behavior or a behavior of a group or it is the objective social phenomenon that is conditioning a group to behave particular behavior similarly a contradiction between the morality and rationality whether it is a moral commitment or it is a rational action a kind of inter, uh, 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 contradiction in that space similarly we find there is enormous process of getting solidarity based on certain group on the uh, uh, other hand we find a lot of fluidity within that group take an example we kind of a solidarity of our nation um, at one point of time um, those solidarity is coming in the name of one nation or uh, one identity then we find those identities go get a, a kind of a fluidity within that identity when the country and the people get divided in terms of caste ethnicity religion so we find again that contradiction at time um, uh, 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 get reflected rationality at times reflected in terms of morality we also find similarly the process of framing and cognition singularity of identity plurality of identity then we find another kind of a social personal social anti or anti social what you find within this whole process when you talk about identity whether identity is a liability or identity is an asset identity is a liability in, in the context of proliferation of social movement or identity becomes um, just otherwise so what is important that um, we are living in a globalized world that has brought lot of contradiction within this social movement uh, phenomenon within this contradiction now we find different kind of social movement is taking place across the globe what is that a kind of a multiple varieties of social movement across the globe what are those social movement we find the nationality movement we find the religious movement we find the environmental movement the gay rights movement environmental movement environmental protection movement so we find the varieties of this movement they want to create an image of an another world image of a new world and through that they try to construct at time lot of cultural identities the economic identities and political identities so we find this globalized world is guided by proliferation of varieties of social movement taking place across the world take india as an example we find uh, it is a site of manifestation of varieties of social movement the peasant movement the farmers movement the dalits movement the tribal movement women's movement the environmental movement what do you find those movement has made the people resilient concern us about their own own kind of problems issues and identities in this society 
simultaneously none of these movements are isolated they are linked and interlinked with one another in terms of certain common point in terms of certain dots by doing it those interlinkages it is creating a culture of a social movement society a social movement society that is widely guided by plurality of social movement taking up long term and permanent position in the society on diverse issues and interest so it is not a one term it's a long term interest and multiplicity of the social movement that's why we find quite a linkage is between linkage between the dalit and the indigenous peoples movement dalit and indigenous movement peoples movement with environmental movement the interlinkages of the dalit and the um indigenous peoples movement with the agricultural workers movement the industrial workers movement so we find a kind of a interlinkages that is creating a culture of collective assertion in a plural framework within the society when this is taking place on the one hand what vaivarika widely talking about there is the proliferation of new kind of assertion in diverse processes creating the democratic space within the available democratic space and also creating the democratic space two issues wide important number one is that there is the availability of the democratic space within which multiplicity of the social movement is taking place on the other hand those social movements are also creating the democratic space with the citizenship rights for their collective assertion so this two taking place on the one hand so this is talking about the creation of a democratic space in terms of a pluralistic of the culture but within the same context with the proliferation of multiplicity of the social movement fast flow of goods services and images how do you find a kind of a manifestation of a different kind of a social movement culture what you call inverted image of social movement that is widely social anti movement that social anti movement they are they are squeezing the space they are squeezing the space at time uh, destroying the space that is created by social movement culture this social anti movement they are talking about not of the citizenship right they are talking about the absolute rights they are talking about the homogeneity as against the um, heterogeneity they are talking about the purity of the culture rather than morality of the culture they champion the absolute and they adopt an attitude of the do and die so what is important and these movements this social anti movement also become violent by not creating that space of democratic space it takes the violent form but the new social movement created the space of non violent collective assertion in a sustainable manner that social anti movement get the space of violent social expression by promoting absolute and championing the absolutes and taking a do and die attitude and they create a new kind of a culture by destroying the pre existing democratic a uh, framework of the society the what vavrico widely talks about they appear in an area arena where social movement also exist but what they do they try to destroy the social movement which is existing uh, in the contemporary world they fight against the uh, social movement culture so that is what he talked about the globalization fight on the one hand um, given the space of proliferation of multiple social movement creating a space for social movement culture it's also creating the space for social anti movement at this stage let us go to the last part of our discussion what we call it transformation of the social movement initially i talked about every social movement is having a life history it having a life history it is undergo a process of transformation in the process of transformation we find various vital elements of the social movement undergo changes its leadership undergo changes its leadership organization its sustainability its culture of protest every day undergo changes in the process of changes it acquires different kind of formulation it may be transform it may be transform a revolutionary movement that is affecting wide range of social and far reaching changes any revolutionary movement that is that widely talk of far reaching wider changes in the society it may be transformed in the quasi movement in the society that is they look for only limited area of change in the society
So there is, there is that the process of transformation from revolutionary movement to the Kajai movement. The another important transformation that attack may take place, what we call it, from radical movement to transformative movement. A radical movement, the resolve for a large scale collective mobilization and try to bring about radical changes through radical ideology. Um, they want to bring a change in the structural arrangement of the society. While they may be transformed into a reformative movement, they look for changes in the institutional arrangement of the society, some of the social processes. So, so that may also take place in terms of revolutionary uh, to quasi movement, radical to reformative movement. Even there is a possibility that old social movement, those are the class-based movement, they may also get transformed into a new social movement, creating a new social identities, having the new social concern. But what we are talking about, it is not necessarily that revolutionarily will be a quasi radical will be reformative, old will be new, it may be the vice versa. A new social movement may take the character of a old social movement or a reformative movement over a period of time may take the form of a radical movement or a quasi movement take the form of a revolutionary movement. So what we find there is enormous complementarity between the institutionalized and the radical movement within the whole process of articulation of interest. Whole uh, journey, new, new uh, developmental trajectory of social movement. What do you find? Then when there is a process of mobilization, there is a mobilization, it creates the possibility of varieties of other mobilization in the society. By doing it, we find the process of collective mobilization and institutionalization uh, go hand in hand. So Indian society is widely reflected with varieties of evidences that many of the um, many of the revolutionary movement, they have taken the form of institutionalized character. And many of the institutionalized movement has remained as an institutionalized movement. At this point, many of the scholars widely contribute to the fact that when a social movement get transformed into a political party, it ceases to be a social movement because the oppositional jail, the jail for collective mobilization that remains attached to a social movement, um, th that jail gradually get dejected, gradually get aborted from the social movement culture. So what you find in the whole trajectory of, of a social movement, there is a process of complementarity between collective mobilization and institutionalization. Okay. Now at this stage, let us, let us um, have a kind of a um, recap what we discussed. First we discuss that is the location of social movement within the wider social processes, number one. Then we talked about what are the vital elements of social movement, that is we have talked about the 10 important elements of social movement, the ideology, the organization, leadership, collective mobilization, interest articulation, uh, sustainability. Uh, these are the vital elements of social movement. Then we talked about uh, various perspectives of social movement studies, the North American perspective, the West European perspective, the resource mobilization perspective, the new social movement perspective. Then we talked about how this uh, proliferation of social movement has taken place within the, uh, with the arrival of uh, a globalizing era. Uh, the, how, how social movement is constructing varieties of fluidity and contradiction in the society. Within that we find there has been proliferation of social movement on the one hand and social anti-movement on the other. Then we talked about the whole dynamics of change and transformation in the social movement. Then we talked about how the radical social movement getting institutionalized, the uh, revolutionary social movement taking the form of quasi movement or the old social movement taking the form of new social movement. Then we finally talked about complementarity between the institutionalized mobilization and the possibility of future mobilization for social movement. Thank you for being with us and uh, we will welcome your feedback if any. Thank you.